we're going to see islands lost. I don't, I don't believe people understand the gravity of what we face here. It seems like it's normal. If you tune into media, all they show is politics and entertainment stuff. So people really don't have a good pulse of what's happening. I have a newsflash. Just as the weather has been consuming lives, right? Uh, so will other situations in every nation. For example, the UK is in trouble right now. Yeah. Do you think they're going to do anything about it? No. Mm. When, when, and I'll say it again. When 70,000 people are lost, then what? Then what? You remember when 50,000 in, in uh, Turkey died? Yes. And everybody forgot? Like it was normal. We, it's almost like we don't, it, uh, people do people not like have to care. They to see, they can't see the trend of the trouble that's coming. They'll see the darkness because it's coming to their front doors, but they can't, they, for some reason, it's almost like, uh, something just wipes their minds out. We have, even right now, weather wise, we're about to hit a crisis point. CERN has recalculated Apophis's arrival. And it's going to hit us, but they're thinking it was September of this year. I'm thinking, no, it's not coming until 2029. But maybe there is something there. Is there been a recalculation? Because they haven't given us any well, updates me, since 2015, Mike. What do you know about this? As Paul, there are good people out there in the world, right? Yep. And on occasion, these good people will, will risk their lives to try and get uh, something questionable out there to the people. When somebody sees something like that, it's out of place. It's out of place. Now, if a good person did that, they're trying to give a warning. Uh, they, they likely are not successful in giving that warning out, not to everybody. But but let me let me just say this: all the information that people have on Apophis came from space agencies. Okay. Okay. The only verification of of um, of Apophis that people had is when it was in proximity to where they could see it with their telescopes. But as far as trajectories and real calculations as far as knowing if it moved because of other celestial objects and the change in celestial mechanics and influences nobody knows so you have these agencies that are they don't release everything and so they give people a date an assumption date which is why i continue to say i'm not worried about apophis that's too far off we're going to have bigger problems no i i can almost guarantee nobody's going to think about apophis nobody so, Nobody's going to be concerned okay, about Okay, so let's Apophis. talk the about Earth that. Be, um, uh, okay, twenty. Somebody knows. Somebody knows that we are we are in trouble. Somebody knows that we're in real trouble, and um, I believe that uh, it, it's almost like the Lord is giving us hint after hint after hint after hint that what we expected, we do not get. What we did not expect is what we're what we always face. This has happened in all aspects of life. Yeah. What we expected, we did not get, but what we did not expect is what we end up having to deal with. The water, for example, right? Okay. The rainstorms we've been having is a consequence of the currents of the waters of the oceans are changing rapidly, right? Now, they're just they're trying to trickle out the information on this. But something is happening to our ocean currents, and of course, they're going to cover their, their, their tracks. But anybody who knows about the... Um, uh, Atlantic um, uh, meridional overturning circulation, AMOC, if they know about that, then they understand that the all that cold water that's been melting is, is changing the salinity of the oceans, specifically of the Atlantic currents, right? They're changing rapidly. So that's causing, you know, a lot more dead fish. Cold water traps gases, right? Okay. Hot water releases gases. Yes. So when you have cold water and its natural flow of things, it settles on the bottom, pushing warmer waters up. And then, of course, that, that hot water goes back up to the poles, freezes again, and the same thing happens. This happens over many, many years. It's been disrupted. This disruption, Pastor Ball, is going to increase temperatures 30 degrees. What? No, we can't, we can't survive that, can we? No, we cannot. No, we cannot. In fact, um, well, let this water shortly, uh, there'll be an example shortly of not okay. surviving heat when certain places of the earth, uh, people cannot be in, period. You'll see that. And I hope that people have some sort of mitigation plan for their own families and homes. We live in a time where the pressure is not going to let up. 
I know people want to break. I know they're tired of hearing the uh, disastrous reports. But things are going to begin to compound themselves. They're going to get worse and worse and worse. Now, it shouldn't be depressing for anybody who believes in Christ. Because we're, we're not, you know, nobody's here by happenstance. I don't believe we're purpose to be here. Which means there's an element within us that's able to deal with anything at any time we live in. If we live in a specific time, we're able to deal with everything around us. That's just the way it is. Um, God doesn't make mistakes. I don't believe that. Hopefully, I, I don't think anybody else believes that either. So we're mm -hmm. here purpose. But these conditions are going to degrade rapidly. People in the USA, for example, uh, you can't really pinpoint who. You know, it, you, people will get closer as the time comes, but there are going to be people who are going to have to abandon their homes. They're going to have to get out of certain states. Uh, I there's some evil people in America right now that will take full advantage of it. Uh, for example, the gang members or gangs taking over uh, apartment complexes all over the USA. Yeah, that's happening. Is anybody aware of that? Yes. Hundreds died in the last two days because of this. So this is happening in the cities, right? Yep. This is happening in the cities. Uh, New York is is uh, New York is a primary target. Uh, for a lot of these gangs, once they once they migrate up there, they're going to do the same thing. But what they don't understand, those cities are the last place you want to be during the this, these alterations in climate. We still have magma on the move, even more underneath our feet, right? We have more calderas. They, they found, I believe they found uh, three new calderas. How do you find three new calderas? Well, that's an unbelievable right? number. How do you uh, find that? Is that right. because they're coming more... Let me ask you, because we've seen where, two things, I don't want to forget the water event in the in the Grand Canyon, but I'll put that for a second. In Italy, we had, we got these volcanoes, I and mean, we got Mount Etna, we got Stromboli, we got Vesuvius, uh, it seems like they're, every, they're all about rumbling, we got I, Iceland went off again, Mike, in the last week, and the toxic plume, remember you said this could be an ash environment, the toxic yeah. plume and fumes and uh, sulfur dioxide smothering people get sore throats. They were in the hospitals. They were in asthma. It'll get worse. It'll get worse. Here in America, everybody, right? You're not going to have to make anybody wear a mask. They will find a respirator. People are going to be trying to think up ways to keep ash out of their home. Really? In it's America? It's going to be all over cars. In America, it's going to be all over cars, all over homes, all over the grass, all over everything. Every, you know, that starts to degrade the environment. Environmental conditions are degrading rapidly on the face of the entire earth. Right? They, yeah. they see it. They see it. It's, it's coming. People can't ignore it all day. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. And so the, the, the water vent, for example, as the ocean currents continue to change, it will change weather patterns even more. The wind will become higher and higher. See, the, the ocean currents regulate the temperature of the earth. They are a huge contributor to the regulation of temperatures on the earth. Without the ocean currents, we have a problem. I know that um, the Gulf Stream, they, they actually have devices that measure the current, right? Yes. So right now, you have a good flow, right? But the flow is 40% less than what it was five years ago. Five years before really? that, there was only a 2% change. So we have a problem. We have a rapid decrease of the ocean currents, a rapid decrease, right? The, ice, uh, the uh, volcano in Iceland, right, for example, th that's a multi-layered system. Remember I talked about that? Yes, that eruption yes, will not stop. It's going to keep going. And so I know other scientists came out there and they said, oh, yeah, it's going to stop within a month. But one of the issues is they they presented all this evidence and proof and everything else. It was going to stop, yet it's still going. And, it, and they, they just used that term, well, we're baffled. No, they're not. They know what's happening. They're not going to tell anybody that conditions are degrading. They can't come out on the news and report any story that would cause even more chaos and panic in the world. They know we're at a, at a, at a tipping point. Yeah. Right? If anybody ever knew that any situation was hopeless, basketball, I guarantee the murder rate would quadruple. That there's some evil people out there. If they hear bad news, if they think, uh, well, this is it, they're going to take full advantage of it in an evil way. And they don't want those people to surface. We have an evil that's about to surface within this country. Nobody's going to hide who they are anymore. That, that's one 
merit that that um, everybody can deal with. So what I'm saying is that just about everybody is going to come out and tell everybody what they truly believe. We live in a time of massive revealing, and it began with the weather. It began with the weather. So you're back and, to that. Um, you went full circle. You went war. You went politics. You went this. You went everything. But you're back to weather because is that I, what I'm hearing you? And, and see if I'm wrong. And this uh, this Colorado water event in 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 Arizona, Mike, is that? Uh, I mean, that's not the first time the Colorado the, the Grand Canyon's had a flash flood. I mean, I know that, but is that? I mean, there was 104 people that be rescued by Black Hawk helicopters. I mean, this came out of nowhere. They, is this what you're talking about, or is there more of this to come? No, that's not the water event, but it certainly is a prelude to what people are going to have to deal with. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, the moisture, the, the ability of the atmosphere to rain, the rain that we see, imagine the average storm dropping about a, probably at a, next year about 82% more than what it drops right now, which means the average thunderstorm will drop about seven inches of rain, right? And in some places per hour. Just think of that. Think of that. Why is this? Because fresh water is starting to take over the oceans. But not fresh water you want to drink. This is not fresh water you want to drink. This is very different water. Okay. So we have a salinity change, an actual chemical change in the oceans, right? They're not really uh, discussing it or talking about it, but the sea life is responding to it. Every single day somewhere, some, some, some dolphins or whales are beaching themselves. Pretty large specimens too. We have a lot of problems with the weather systems and we've already, a long time ago, they said, hey, everybody, if the temperature goes up 1.3 degrees, we're in trouble. That was the tipping point. We passed that two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago. And nobody, it, it is just shocking. Who's, nobody's nobody talking about, about it. Nope. So next year, the sun, the solar issues that we're going to have to go through, we're going through a peak in 2025. We went through a peak in 2024. This is only the first peak. Every single solar cycle has two peaks, right? We're going to have three this time, possibly four. What? No, what you're talking about we, the maximum. You're talking about the solar maximum. It's going to yes, yes, yes. We're going to have some peaks, peaks, peaks and then more. We're going to have some peaks, which means, and and during a solar cycle, right? All the sunspots gravitate towards the equator of the sun, right? And they, that's why they concentrate in the center. Um, there's a butterfly graph. You can see these um, peaks, and you can see where the sunspots actually move in a solar cycle. Normally, they have two specific peaks of activity. We're going to have more than that. Plus, we have a problem with the magnetic shielding of this Earth. It is starting to fluctuate. All of this has happened before, and every single time it does happen, it, it, it just increases in magnitude, right? So this year, you know, if, if a lot of people in the Middle East... They understand about the heat this year. You know, you walk outside and it's 130 some degrees and you fall over dead. Yeah, okay, of you course. About yeah, the heat. Yeah. But what happens when it's 115 on the east coast of America? In places where it's never been 115. Why has every temperature record been smashed this year again? Why are the oceans so hot that people, that some people can't even enjoy themselves in the water at the beach? Because the water's too hot, right? So we have we have these issues happening, and it will escalate. It's going to escalate. And somebody knows that we have an incursion, or we have, um, let's just say that when it comes to monitoring the sky, if a person will put their finger in front of their face, all the money we spend covers that much of the sky. The rest we do not cover. So you have to do is hold your hand out, at, hold your finger out at arm's length, right? Your finger will cover up a piece of the sky. That's how much of the sky we can see. We cannot see the rest. Well, we're flying blind then, right? We're, we're flying blind. Of course we are, which is why many surprises are coming 2024 from up there. 24 and 25? Yep. The I mean, fireworks will begin. So, okay, now you've talked about meteorite um, belt. Uh, some kind of meteorite cloud. I think one time you talked about these two clouds out there, a distance. <clears throat> and I think you used the word, we're coming into the galactical plane or some type of meteor belt. Is that part of this 2024, 2025 
uh, concern you have. It certainly is 2025. And, but part of 2024 is just the standard unknown, the, these unknown issues, right? People at CERN have, uh, uh, there are people at CERN that, uh, those experiments at CERN yeah. and some of the research and some of the things that come out of it, they have expanded their community. They also work with the uh, International Space Station and other space platforms out there. So they coordinate their experiments. Obviously, they can see a lot more than we can, right? And um, again, there are good people in these places sometimes, and they will attempt to get you know, to, to put something out there in the hopes that people will understand it. Based off that statement you gave and some other uh, internal things, I can almost guarantee that um, we're going to see some fatalities. We're actually going to start seeing fatalities of incursions beginning almost immediately. I can almost guarantee that. The, the rate at which things have penetrated the atmosphere, it's not stopped. Here's the issue, though. They, they don't report on that anymore. No. Right? And evidently, you know, I went to, I went to, uh, recently I went to spacebrother.com to see everything in there. Yeah. And I went to a few other sites. They're still scrubbing data. They are? They, they won't allow, they, they just simply won't are, allow, obviously, access to certain things. So are you, you have are people you, who... Are, are you talking about that, you know, there's a chart on all the asteroids that are coming, and they have the name of the asteroid and how big it is and its speed and how close to the Earth. Are they giving us everything they see? No. And that's the problem. No. Well, for example, when, when, that, when, when Russia had that explosion over there, yeah. Nobody saw that coming, no, right? Nobody. No, you're right. I so remember that. Why does it have a, but it has a number. How did it have a number prior to it exploding over Russia, right? See, we, that's when BP Earthwatch was covering uh, yep. Einstein. Do you remember that? Yep. It was, it was and, uh, I think it was around 2013, and yeah. BP was really watching uh, Comet Eisen, and and, right. uh, and then all of a sudden this thing just come out of nowhere and exploded in Russia. And it had a numeric value prior to that date. So somebody saw it, but they wouldn't allow it to be. They knew exactly. They knew it was coming, didn't they? And now they know something flew right through it. So are we being told, wait a minute, something flew right through it. What are you talking something about? Something flew through it and exploded that comment. And it, it, after it went through it, that object went north. Are you saying so that somebody sort of, blew this thing up? They, that they shot yeah, a rocket yeah, into it? Yeah. Somebody shot, something went right through it. That's very clear. What was the reason for that? Is that to lessen the blow? Or that was defense. It, it was just an aerial explosion, kind of like Tunguska. It wasn't natural. They fired yeah. something in it, yeah, to explode it. And, um, but we'll have more of those. You know, more of those. You the bad part is, I have to give we're going to have, it's, it's full of ice, right? Arsenic. I mean, that's yeah. going to be bad. Some yeah. arsenic you, we can get away with, right? But we can't get away with high doses of arsenic. So I hope that, um, People are prepped for this. Uh, shower of some sort. But there must be, you must have some information, or there must be something that's big, or several, boom, 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 some kind of uh, invasion of, uh, I'm not saying invasion, uh, uh, you know, meteor impact coming, a deep impact that's coming. And because why are they building all these cities? I mean, why all this underground stuff going on? I mean, it's, it's not just about nuclear war, is it? No, it's not. You know what? There will come a day when um, people will run through cracked streets attempting to find shelter in, in buildings, you know, underground to shield them from the skies. When we deal with fire, that day will come as a surprise. Um, and unfortunately, the greater populace is not going to know that. Nobody in the Christian community should ever look outside of the Christian community for any information regarding that. Because I'll tell you something, if the Christian community does not acquire that information themselves, they're not going to get it. And they're about to get an example of that. Right? So, so let, me, let me just say, if somebody had, if they knew some weird way that 70,000 people were about to die, right? And nobody says a word. And then that event happens. Wouldn't that be an example that nobody outside the Christian community is going to warn anybody about anything real they're going to have to deal with? So 70,000 people could die 
And if 70,000 people die from some kind of event and we never got told it was going to happen, and then it happens, and we know when it happens that they knew. We will know that they knew. Somebody knew. A government leaders. And they're, and they're not going to warn anybody. They're not going to warn anybody because if they do, there's, there's anarchy. There's chaos. That's the entire point. How can they warn? How can anybody out there warn? Any, the day they warn people is the day people will say, uh, there's no use to be a nice guy anymore. Right. Because fast forward, most people suppress who they really are. Hopefully the Christian community has purged most of what they are, but most people suppress it. And more and more, every single day, you're going to find that people are not suppressing who they are. They're going to display who they are. But if that event were to take place, I hope that Christians do understand that the world is not going to give them a heads up. For yeah, what's coming. I agree with that. They're not going to do it. So let's say it happens. Let's say it happens, uh, you know, on December 15th or something. Let's just say. And there's this horrific, let's say it's a deep impact of some sort. 70,000 people die. A tsunami is a uh, hundred foot deep or high uh homes are washed away people are it's in, it's just absolutely nobody's seen it coming it's the most horrific people are going to turn straight to the governments of their nations and say you had to have known with all your satellites yeah, they're gonna they're yeah. gonna be angry mike they're gonna yeah, be just angry like, just like uh whether it happens naturally or man-made just like 9 11 same thing it'll be the same thing and people, believe me when i tell you they're ready for people to blame them for something like that. Oh, you're they saying the governments are ready? They got, they got a contingency plan on how to deal with the populace deal when the, the populace people. rise right. up against them? That's right. That's right. They have a contingency It's going to get ugly, I, then. I, Pastor, it's going to get far uglier than people uh, count on. Uh, listen, though, it, it's um, those diligent folks who know about this, especially in, in Germany and in London and in the USA and in France, and they kind of have an obligation to keep the pulse they have to be of, quiet. of what's going around to inform uh, the Christian community because the world is not going to tell anybody about this stuff, right? On both sides, and it is political, listen, because they're saying on both sides that the other guy, the other gal is dangerous. That's yeah, they're, they're really. But I know one thing. I've been. I've studied comets. I, well, first of all, if you just study comets in history, something about mm -hmm. it when they go by, kings mm -hmm. die. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now he's sick. We've got this comet right now. There's a comet that's on the way. Oh boy. And and Prince William's hanging in the wings. Is there anything going on here that we need to well, know? I well, I'll tell you what. When does this comet come by? It comes by in October. Okay, guess what else happens in October? Mm, tell me. It's, it's part of a very um, a very different alignment happens in October. Okay. It's, it's a very different one. So it's not only that, but we have an alignment that will not take place for another, I believe it's like 8,000 oh, years those or something four, like that. Those four planets that come into a square? Yeah, two, of those, two of those planets okay. are the important ones. The rest are detractors. In other words, the rest are just distractions two of those planets mean everything and when all this um all this is right in the same neighborhood right october now, now there have been policies of that king that he has set up for whatever king comes forward now a king will come forward mm. a king will come forward mm. right and that king is set up with powers and authorities um boy could that that's be trying to be something could that could, i mean Okay, so Mike's talking about there is an alignment going to happen where four planets they don't line in a in a in a linear. They s set up a box, something that won't happen yeah. for like eight thousand years. I think you said. Yeah, because they're equally that that's known as when you have planets that show themselves this way, right? In a yeah. box or, or side by side. Yep. Right. That that means they're what they call that term. Um, I don't know. Uh, equally. Equally luminous. That phrase, equally luminous, equally means they're both luminous. bright at the same time. Right? Yes. If they're in alignment, you can only see, you know, one at a time. So the brightness yes. is kind of yes. skewed. But when they're all shiny, then the brightness is equal. And that's what makes the difference. The, equally, the equal brightness of them makes the difference. And so these, the, the, these uh, patterns in mm -hmm. the heavens, they certainly do have... They have a lot to do with historical. Yeah, things, they do. Right? Okay, so you're now, gonna I, you're gonna have this, and then at the same time you're having this, you've got this comet Atlas 
that's on its way, and it's going to appear, uh, it's going to first really be seen, because it's been behind the sun, has been blocking it. You're going to see it on October the 9th, which is in the Feast of Trumpets, and then you're going to, then it's going to get its brightest with its longest tail on October 19th, which is in the Feast of Tabernacles. But that's going to be going on while these four planets are in alignment, and that's going on, okay, that's, that's a feast, and it's the feast, period. Okay, so there's a lot there, but a comet's a lot of times mean a king is going to die and a new one's coming in. I don't know what all this other stuff means, uh, but I'm just saying historically, I do know what comets yeah. happen. But you're saying this is, there's something happening. Is there a shift in the heavens going to cause a shift on the earth? I, I think it's it's alluded to. I'd have to. I don't want to say anything without knowing exactly, past ball. Okay. I'm, okay. I don't want to put my foot in my maybe, mouth. Maybe next Thursday. Maybe next way. Thursday we can let's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have it. I'll have okay, it. You have it but, uh, okay. You have it. Okay. Okay. Because I listen. I believe. This is my belief. And and but in in Genesis, the Lord God positioned everything as per His liking, but He set everything in the skies for signs and for seasons. Amen. Remember that word is signals. So they do mark a calendar, a yep. clock. They, they, so if we would, if people would not get in, not get into the esoteric stuff, no. but really understand the structure of the heavens, they'd find some pretty wild things. Amen. Right? Um, but they would also know historically that they do coincide with all the major events. So let's, the last one of them. Let's so what it's you beyond coincidence. Said. Okay, we're not talking astrology, folks. We're not at all talking astrology. That is where the devil has tried to hijack God's signals to us. That's right. Am I That's right, right, Mike? So we wouldn't even look at it. So we wouldn't it. even look. Because, right. oh, God, right. Begley and Mike are talking about astrology. Right. No, we're not. We're talking biblical That's right. prophetic signs. That God That's said, right. Genesis 1, 14. God said, I, he put signs uh, in the heavens. He said, for, you know, for day and night. And for signs and seasons, and for mm -hmm. years, you know, days and years, mm -hmm. calendar. Mm -hmm. And he's saying to us, if you watch what I'm telling you, I'm speaking to you, whether it be mm -hmm. a solar eclipse or a blood moon or a planet alignment or a comet in the heavens. If you just, uh, if you just listen to me, I'm talking to you. The yeah. devil said, oh, really? Let me just go in there and corrupt that and then condemn every Christian that ever looks up there. Yeah. And that's what you're saying, aren't you, Mike? Oh yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't see it like you know the astrologers do right. about Ezekiel, Isaiah, all of them. They knew about the heaven. Job knew about it. Everybody yep. knew about it. Um, it. It's knowledge that's been lost. It is part of creation, Amen. Right? and they certainly do their job. But I, I think that people have turned it. They just pervert it. Satan perverts yep. everything. It's like all these ghost shows that are out right now. Satan has people thinking about these spirits the way he wants them. To interpret them, newsflash: these people are being marked. Yep. Because that the 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 the, uh, the gates are opened. Hmm. They're open. You know what that means? The gates open. That means there are people walking among us right now, right? That are going to show exactly what they are. And I guarantee you, basketball people are not going to care. But other people, some people will run, but most will attempt to entertain them. There are a lot of witches in this hmm. world who practice witchcraft. Yep. And they can't continue to call them forward. I hate to say it, but the, this uh, lust for UFOs has has been the, one of the keys to opening it's the is doors. It deception? Is it delusion? Yeah. Is it well? Any time we lust after something, have mm. this unquenchable thirst for something that is not righteousness, right? Mm. It is. It's, it's only going to feed the darkness within us. And whether people know it or not, they are the authority only. God put man. God gave man the authority on the earth. So when mankind has a desire to see something, He's inviting it. Right? Amen. That goes for everybody. That's us in our homes and everything else. Yeah. I, when I was a child, I noticed when I had a desire to do certain things, everything will start changing. And I would, I would notice the smallest changes in my environment. So desire is powerful. But desire gets, gives authority to spirits we can't even see. And if we're just calling anything in, you know, just come on so I can see you. That desire is, is that's when a person becomes a portal. And through that person, many things will come. They're not only to that person, but Satan is trying to get to the families of the individual. He comes through. Amen. He'll do anything to destroy everything he can.
right? So I have no desire for that, but I see it happening all over the world. Amen. And unfortunately, when they're irresponsible about the UFO topic, like they sensationalize it in the world, people get a strong desire to, to you know, pursue go it. and pursue do it. things with some things they know nothing about, mm. right? Um, and that that's bad. That's when you get the get desire, yeah. and they end up tormented. You get in the demon world. You start entering into the demon They're world. being marked. They're being marked, Pastor Paul, and the day will come when there will be no more barrier. When that barrier is taken down, then I believe that passage in the Bible when it says men will seek death but will not find it and death will flee from them, that day they're going to have to deal with it. Amen. Mike, this has been an incredible evening. I mean, we could talk for hours. I think that, and there's almost 9,000 people here. They'd probably stay with us for hours, but we got to, we got to have to let you go, you know, and, uh, I want to thank you. We've really covered a ton of topics. You've been incredibly open and, and, and given us great in advice. And, and that question we were talking about, uh, I think we got to talk about that next Thursday. Uh, those are planet. Four we will. We will. Let's talk about we that will. next Thursday. We will. Thank you for being here tonight, Mike. I appreciate you always. I really, really, really do coming on here on these shows on Thursday night. I really appreciate it. Fastball is always an honor. God bless you, brother. The honor is mine. God bless you so much. God bless you, Mike. All right. Mike from around the world, folks.